So glad to have you here with us. Glad that you're here with us in the sanctuary. Those of you that are worshiping out in the patio, and for those of you that are worshiping with us online, we're just blessed that God has connected us together as family to be here and worship. I have missed you so much. It's so glad. Okay. So good to be back. It's hard to believe that next Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent. Advent, Christmas is almost here. It's, it's hard to imagine that. Which reminds me, you know, Advent in the church calendar, Advent is actually the beginning of the year, which gives me an opportunity to remind you of the 2023 flower chart that is out there. So, so please feel free to hit that. There you go, Judy. It seems as though the year has flown by, but yes, next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. Next Saturday, we will be sponsoring our Hanging of the Greens here in the sanctuary and around the church grounds. There's a lot of work to do, but you know, many hands make for light work and for even better fellowship. So we encourage you to come next Saturday at 9 a.m. here in the sanctuary to get our church grounds ready for Advent and for Christmas. We are excited to be offering a new members class on Sunday, December 4th, after worship upstairs in the conference room. We have many, many longtime faithful folks who we already count as members of our church family. But the new members class is an opportunity for us to kind of formalize that relationship. So we, we hope and pray that you will consider being a part of that group. And if you wouldn't mind, RSVP to the church office so that we make sure that we have enough materials uh, ready for you when you come. Also on December 4th, we'll be receiving new unwrapped gifts for children's ages uh, 1 through 12. We'll be collecting those gifts in support of children of service members at Camp Pendleton. So it's a great opportunity to make a, a child's Christmas just a little bit that much more special. So we, we invite you to be a part of that. As you might have noticed, today the Red Cross is on site, and they're offering the opportunity to donate blood. And they'll be here until 1.30. Now, I know a number of you have made appointments to do that, but they also take walk-ins. So after worship, after fellowship, please feel free to, to poke your head into guard hall, stick it out an arm, and, and make a blood donation if you can. Uh, the pastor's Bible study on Matthew resumes on Tuesday, November 29th. And we'll be meeting at 10.30 in the conference room. And finally, I want to remind you that tickets are now on sale for the Christmas Worship Festival offerings on Saturday, December 3rd, and then Sunday afternoon, December 4th. They are on sale at, on the patio. And we've been announcing these for several weeks, but let me just offer something for you to think about. The, the, the choir has been working so hard. They've been working as hard as they've ever worked on the Christmas Worship Festival. But this is a new day. It's a different time. And people aren't gathering in large gatherings the way we're used to. So it puts a, I think it puts a bit of a responsibility upon the rest of us who are okay gathering like this to go out and help sell tickets. Invite your friends. Invite your neighbors. Invite extended family members to come and be a part of the Christmas Worship Festival offerings, again, either on Saturday, December 3rd, or Sunday, December 4th. Tickets are on sale uh, out at the patio by 1, by 10, by 100, if you got that many friends. And, and let's see what we can do about getting a great group of folks together for the Christmas Worship Festival. Also, just a reminder, please, to get your pledge commitments in, if you could, as soon as possible. I invite you now to please rise and join with me in our call to worship. We gather as children of God. The Spirit lives and moves amongst us. I invite you to be seated and please join with me in prayer. Let's pray together. Come, Lord Jesus, here where we have gathered in your name. We need to hear your voice and learn of you. Come, speak to us of gentleness and strength. In your compassion, draw us into your merciful embrace. 
hush the distracting thoughts clamoring for attention in our minds, center our spirits in your peace, and open our hearts to your wise teaching, that we may grow wise and strong in the ways of your kingdom. Amen. Please rise and join me in praising our Lord.
We worship a God of justice and mercy. We worship a God who calls us to joyful obedience and yet meets our rebellious hearts with grace and mercy. Trusting in the grace of God, let us confess our sins to God from the bottom of our hearts. Eternal God, we confess that we have praised you with our lips, but have not glorified you with our lives. Have mercy on us, we pray, for our brief faithful that fades under pressure, for our quick enthusiasm that just as quickly die, for the hopes we proclaim but do not pursue. Forgive us, Lord God, and give us new trust in your power that may we live for justice and tell of your loving kindness by our acts as by our words. Hear now, O Lord, as we confess those times and places when we have disappointed you and ourselves. Amen. God is our guide and redeemer, our hope in times of trial. We do not fall short of the glory of God, but we are forgiven in Christ Jesus. May we go forth now, knowing that God's mercy and grace is always sufficient for uh, our lives. I invite you now to please rise and sing together our praise of thanksgiving for God's grace and mercy. individuals and as a church family we have confessed our brokenness and received forgiveness from a grace-filled God. We invite you now to greet your friends and new friends as the forgiven and redeemed in Jesus Christ. The peace and joy of Christ be with you.
Good morning. I'd like to invite the children in the sanctuary to come forward for this morning's children's message and everyone watching from home gather around. I'm going to have you sit down first because I'm going to talk to them for just a minute. So our fuzzy friends are in the sunshine room. They're waiting for us to go to Sunday school. But I wanted to fill everybody in real quick, okay? So on Wednesday, for Pathfinders, the children had their, um, we call it our Thanksgiving mini feast with a chicken tender from Kentucky Fried Chicken and uh, mashed potatoes and gravy and mac and cheese and, of course, Maddox's favorite and I think Pastor Annette's favorite, the biscuits. <laughs> And we had a really nice time being together and praying together and giving thanks together. And then we did a project together where we had some leaves and we wrote on the leaves things that we were thankful for. And just when I think everything's wrapped up, Maddox says, Miss CM, we have to show the church this on Sunday when we do the children's time. And I thought that was such a great idea. So our message today is kind of, we're sharing what we did with all of you. So Maddox, you said you would hold this for me, right? So I can read it. And Violet, do you want to come up too? No? Okay. Thank you, Maddox. So I don't have time to read them all, and they're all equally important, and they all came from the children. They didn't come from, from me or any leadership, so I'll read a few of them. Um, water. LMPC kids are thankful for water. Animals, of course, Maddox and Violet and our friends. The trees, of course, we have God on there. Um, these are sweet, Miss Susie, Miss Ellen, Miss Annette, Pastor Jim, Miss Nancy, Mr. Scott. We have penguins, of course, <laughs> everyone's thankful for penguins. We have my dog. Sports, Jesus. So we have so many things to be thankful for. There's a whole bunch more on here. Thank you, Maddox. So boys and girls, these are things that you all are thankful for, and we can call them blessings. We have so many blessings. But my message for you today is that you are blessings. So you are blessings to me. You are blessings to your family. You are blessings to everyone in the church, and you are a blessing to the church. And we're going to talk about that more in Sunday school, okay? So let's sing our prayer song, and then we'll pray, and we'll take our thankful chart with us, okay? God is always near me. God will always hear me when I pray. Bow your heads with me. Dear loving God, thank you for all of our blessings. Thank you during this week that we have time to, um, to be thankful and to be mindful of things that we are thankful for. And may we all just try a little harder this week and just this whole season to um, give a little more, a little more thought, a little bit more care to each other the way you want us to. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'll meet you at the back door with Miss Ellen for Sunday school. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord.
please be seated. Let me pull up a stool here. Our second lesson for today comes from the Gospel of Mark. I want to invite you to lean forward, grab one of those Bibles out of the pew racks. Those of you that are home, grab that Bible that you have right there next to your bed or out there on the patio. Please feel free to read along in the order of worship. We're going to read from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in the front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And at once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, So they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Here ends our second scripture reading for today. I invite you to join with me in prayer. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for this Sabbath day, an opportunity to come together to sing praises to your name, to pray together, to love and encourage one another, and to hear your word, and to hear your ideas, to hear your plans for our lives. And so, Lord God, as we gather now again around your word, we ask that you would speak to us. Help us to see ourselves in this story. And if we can't, challenge us, Lord God to find our place and to lean into it. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen. This is a familiar story. It is set early in the ministry of Jesus. Capernaum, a fishing village, set on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. And those of you that were just in Israel, you know exactly where we're talking about. Uh, Capernaum, home to five of his disciples. Capernaum now serves as kind of the the hub of Jesus' ministry in Galilee. And unlike Nazareth, most of the homes in Capernaum were built either of stacked stone or of mud bricks. Average homes were no more than two or three rooms with a set of stairs that led to a roof which was often used for sleeping. Animals were brought in at night, and so food for the animals was often stored up on that roof. And they would have a hole made in the roof that was normally covered over by tiles, and it was through that hole that the food was let down to the animals at night. And it was through that hole that the paralyzed man of our story was brought down and set before Jesus. As with all of Scripture, there are several, several important sermons here. We could could talk about the pretensions of the crowd that blocked the friends from, from using a more conventional route to get their paralyzed buddy in front of Jesus. 
And we could be asked to wonder about our own pretensions. If, if perhaps our insistence on church being conducted in a certain way, in a certain style, in a certain form, is blocking others from a transformative encounter with Jesus. We can talk about Jesus as a miracle worker and wonder if we are planting ourselves faithfully, expectantly in position to recognize those miracles. We could talk about the paralyzed man exploring his life as an, as an outsider in polite Jewish community and then marvel at the inclusivity of Jesus' ministry. And the challenge in that sermon would be to explore just how inclusive our ministry is as well. As I said, there are a number of important sermons that could be offered for consideration from this text. But today, after everything that I've been through over the past several weeks, as I think about our church, I am most taken by the four men who carried the paralytic in on his bed. We don't really know much about them. We don't even know their names, but I would say that these faith giants going against the crowd that blocked their entrance to Jesus, climbing the stairs, no, no easy task with a paralyzed man on a cot, these four men are of such faith that they know, they know that if they can get their friend in front of Jesus, his life will be changed forever. Four men, each carrying a corner of the bed, they do what they have to do to get their friend healed. It's been a long four weeks. And while my surgery went very well, recovery has been slow and painful, just as anticipated. There really have been no surprises. But as I look back on my own healing experiences, I realize that, that like the paralyzed man in our story, my healing has come about because of the loving, faithful work of four groups of people, each carrying a corner of my cot. On one corner has been Becky, flying with me, helping me get checked in and settled into our hotel, taking over at the last minute leadership of, of a pilgrimage trip to Israel and doing a wonderful job. My surgery and my healing would never have occurred if it wasn't for Becky doing her part to get me there. On another corner are our two daughters, Ashley and Christy. Both have very busy lives. They are wives, they are employees, and they each are a parent, a mom, to very active children. Now, I'm not biased. I would, I would want to include exceptional children. But, you know, they're active. And so there's a lot of, lot of mothering work that goes on there. But they came to Charlotte one at a time, kind of tag teaming, when I couldn't be in the hotel by myself after surgery, and Becky had gone to Israel. And they brought me food. They made sure I took my medicine. They changed the bandages on my back. And with Becky leading the group in Israel, my healing would have been much more difficult if I was there by myself. And, and quite honestly, there's a good chance that the surgery would have never even occurred if it wasn't for the presence and care of Ashley and Christy. On the third corner were my son-in-law, Troy, and my sister, Kathy. Troy 
provided the hotel room out of his Marriott points collection, resulting in a two-week hotel stay at no expense to Becky and I. And my sister Kathy, knowing that I would not be able to sleep in a bed for several nights, arranged to have this deluxe recliner delivered to my hotel room to sleep in. How great is that? It was a lifesaver. And on the very last corner was Becky's sister uh, and her husband, Karen and Gary, who flew from Idaho to the Bay Area to stay with Trent to help with the four grandkids while Christy and Ashley were away. They helped drive the kids to school, to dentist appointments, and, and the countless other appointments the young children have today. All four of these groups were present sacrificial and full of grace. Each of them, when I tried to express my appreciation, simply said, this is what family does. They pick up the burden. They sacrifice. And they did all of this for the well-being of another, me. It was It was incredibly gracious and humbling. They did what they had to do to get another healed, much like the four men of our story from Mark. And as I recuperate now, yes, still very sore at the surgical site, but free from all pain in my legs and able to walk again, I will be forever thankful for those four groups of people whose effort and sacrifice made it possible for me to be healed. I've spent a lot of time over the last four weeks, I had a lot of time to think, think about this church that I love and the church family, you that I serve. You know, we are faced with, with institutional and cultural obstacles that make it increasingly difficult to get our members in front of Jesus. I hope I'm not stretching the metaphor too far, but, but like the four cot bears in our story, I believe that we here at LNPC have four groups of people that are seeking to carry this church family into a transformative encounter and relationship with Jesus Christ. Carrying one side of the cot is our church staff. Now, yes, this is their job. Yes, they are paid for their efforts. All of that is true. But today, we are doing more with less staff than we have ever had. Personnel costs as a percentage of our missional budget continue to decrease. Your staff works far beyond what they are paid, and they do so graciously and sacrificially. We are blessed to have the staff that we have at this church. On another corner of our cots is that vast group of volunteers, so many of you that, that make the ministry of this church possible. Choir members, Missions servants, teachers at this church, and others are all volunteers. And we could never do what we do without these faithful servants who contribute so much of their time to the ministry life of LNPC. Now, this church has had a long list of men and women who have served as exemplars, as, as faith giants, in the area of volunteer service, and it is always dangerous to name names. Not because we shouldn't recognize them, but because at least I inevitably forget to name someone. 
So I'm just going to talk about folks that used to be here, but I've either maybe moved away or, or maybe they've passed on. But we've had people like Bill Lee, Joanne Renning, Denise Carter, and others who have donated thousands of volunteer hours of service to God and God's church family here at LMPC. And I would be remiss if I didn't offer the name of Sam Johnson to that list of volunteer service faith giants. Sam has toiled faithfully, always in the background, never wanting recognition for all the things that he has done. Sam Johnson is a great man of faith and service, and we will always be thankful for his kind heart, his quick smile, his expertise, and his great service to God and this church family. Staff on one side, volunteers on another. On the third corner of our cot is our elected leadership deacons and elders, men and women who have vowed to the best of their ability to discern the mind of Christ and to provide pastoral care for our church family. As the ministry life of our church has grown, so has the responsibilities of elected leadership. We've been exploring new ground in the life of LMPC, Life during and after a pandemic has changed how we do church. And those changes have required discerning and courageous hearts. And we have been blessed with elected leadership who have offered all of their gifts, all of their talents, all of their abilities in service to this church. And on the fourth and final corner of our cot, bringing participants in front of Jesus, is you. You, the congregation, members and friends of this church family. You have been faithful. You have been gracious. You have been forgiving. You have been patient as the Holy Spirit has led us into new seasons of ministry. And as I mentioned in the sermon offered on Stewardship Sunday, we are not without our challenges. In the current fiscal year, we need to finish strong. We are far behind our budget on both pledged and non-pledged giving. In 2023, we need a greater percentage of our congregation engaged in the spiritual discipline of pledged giving, our current uh, income flow is simply not sufficient to take us far into the future. Yes, we have our challenges, like many churches, but this congregation has always risen to similar challenges in the past. So we have no reason to think that this congregation will not do so in this year and into the future. I have faith in you. Our paralyzed man in Mark was carried by four men who refused to allow the crowds and the difficulties of carrying him onto the roof to get in the way of placing their friend before Jesus. I had four groups of people who carried me, and this church has four groups, staff, volunteers, elected leadership, and the congregation, each of whom have picked up their part of the burden to place this collective church family in front of Jesus. In front of Jesus for transformation in front of Jesus for relationship, in front of Jesus for healing, in front of Jesus for discipleship, in front of Jesus for encouragement and support. Yes, our challenges are great, but our God is greater. 
Jesus has done his part. The Holy Spirit is doing her part. Can we continue to do ours? I believe that we can. I believe that we must. Amen. We are, as individuals, as families, and as a church family, we are people deeply, deeply loved, blessed, and redeemed in Jesus Christ. We have much to be thankful for. So in this season of thankfulness, we bring our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings as an expression of gratitude and obedience to our Lord. And we invite you to leave your offerings in the baskets by the door as you leave here today. Now, would you please join with me in prayer? Oh, come, Holy Spirit. Come, rain down upon us, Lord. Thank you for loving us so much before we even loved you. Thank you for drawing us into your family and for just always being with us, for leading and guiding us no matter what, for giving us healing and your presence of love and compassion, and for reminding us always that we are your children, the children of your resurrection, Lord. There is so much hope in knowing that. So we thank you for your love, for your compassion. And everything you have given to us, Lord, is on loan from you. So we give back to you, Lord, whatever it is that you touch our hearts, our minds, and our souls to give back to you. And we thank you, most of all, for loving us and being with us right here, right now. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Jesus walked upon the water. He stilled the storm and calmed the angry sea. With his hands he healed the leper. He made the lame to walk, the blind to see. He fed a thousand people with a loaf or two of bread. And when the ruler's daughter died, he raised her from the dead.
Thank you. Thank you, Lily. That's beautiful. The miracle that rescues you and me. That is a miracle indeed, isn't it? That we are part of God's family, just the way we are. And he's also given us the power of prayer. So let us pray together. Oh, gracious God, we come before you with hearts overflowing with thankfulness for the endless love and compassion that you have for us. We give you thanks for your goodness and blessings of joy, hope, and peace over our lives. Lord, help us to remember to give thanks in our trials, our sorrows, and our frustrations. We give you thanks for living in a land of freedom, for the beauty of creation, for the animals, and for people of all diverse cultures among us. Above all things, we give thanks for Jesus taking our place on the cross so that we can live forever, reminding us that we are children of the resurrection. Lord, forgive us when we do not thank you enough for all that you have done for us and continue to do for us. Help us to remember to be thankful for each one, for every single one amongst us. And guide us to be mindful of your spirit moving in our midst, knowing us better than we know ourselves. Let your love flow through us onto others, especially for those whom we find different from ourselves. Equip us to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, support the sick, and give comfort to the lonely. We pray for your healing power to be poured down on this earth to end abuse, injustice, famine, and poverty. May your spirit cover it all with your eternal freedom, love, compassion, and the healing of hope of Christ. Lord, hover over our land. Pour down your grace, compassion, and forgiveness. Bring us together. Heal and unify us for your glory. And be with those in authority. Give them wisdom and discernment for the journey ahead. And Lord, here at LNPC, we are grateful for the body of Christ, for all the times when we were troubled and friends from church ministered to us. We pray especially for those, Lord, who are on hospice care. We pray for, for Sam Johnson. We pray for Doris Black. May you be with them, and may we be with their families and give them your peace and your loving presence. And Lord, we also pray for all the times that we could have been hurt, but we were not. We pray for all the times we could have chosen evil over good, but we didn't. And Lord, we pray for all the times when we could have gotten into trouble, but we didn't. So during this season of being grateful, we are so thankful for you being with us, protecting us, leading us, and guiding us. Help us to focus more on you, Lord, for being here with us now through Jesus Christ, your Son, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have faith opportunities in front of us. Opportunities to grow into the likeness of Christ. Opportunities to make that growth possible for others. It can happen. It will happen if we each take a corner. Now may the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our souls this day and every day. Amen.